Harold and Nicola de Grie got married on Valentine's Day in 1988. A year later, their son O'Brien was born. Then in 1990, their daughter Aisha was born. The family lived in Shelby, North Carolina. The family was very much focused on their extended family, school and their relationship with God. The parents tried their best to protect their children from outside influences. They did not even have a computer in the house. Aisha was in fourth grade in the year 2000 at Falston Elementary School. Aisha loved playing basketball and she was a star point guard. On February 13th at 8 p.m., O'Brien and Aisha went to bed in a bedroom that they shared. Just before 9 p.m., the power in the neighborhood went out because of a nearby car accident. The power came back on during the middle of the night at 12.30 a.m. on February 14th. Harold then went to check on the children and saw them both sleeping. Just before he went to bed at 2.30 a.m., he again checked on the children and they were still asleep in their beds. After that, O'Brien heard Aisha's bed squeak. He assumed she merely changed her position, so he went back to sleep. He was wrong. Aisha got out of bed. She then took a book bag and filled it with clothes and personal items and left the house. Between 3.45 am and 4.15 am, a trucker and a motorist saw her walking along Highway 18. Aisha was wearing a long sleeve white t-shirt and white pants. The motorist turned around his vehicle because he figured it was strange for a little girl to be walking around at that hour. He saw Aisha run into the woods by the roadside and then disappear. It was raining and it looked like a storm was coming. Equilla awoke at 4.45 am to get her children ready. She was in a good mood. It was Valentine's Day and also her wedding anniversary. When she opened the children's room at 6.30 am, she noticed that O'Brien was in his bed, but Aisha wasn't in hers. She looked for her throughout the house and even in the family cars, but still no sign of Aisha. Equilla then told Harold. He suggested that maybe Aisha went across the street to his mother's house. Equilla then called but was told Aisha isn't there. That is when panic set in and the police was called. At 6.40 am, police arrived at their house. They had police dogs but the dogs could not pick up her scent outside. Equilla went through the neighborhood yelling Aisha's name. By 7 am everyone was awake and looking for Aisha. Local news also arrived on the scene and thanks to them, the trucker and the motorist came forward telling police what they saw. The police now knew what direction Aisha headed in but still couldn't find her. At the end of the day, there was still no sign of her. The next day, candy wrappers were found in a shed at a nearby business along the highway. Along with them were a pencil, a marker and a Mickey Mouse shaped hair bow. It was confirmed that these items belonged to Aisha. Also that day, Equilla found that Aisha's favorite clothing was missing from her room. That is how they knew that Aisha must have packed clothes and some personal items into her book bag. After a week, the search for Aisha was called off. 9,000 man hours was invested into searching for her. The police also followed up on every single lead. Missing person posters were put up in the entire area. The belief was that Aisha ran away, especially since she packed the things herself. On the other hand, it is not typical for a 9 year old to run away though. There was also no reason for her to run away. She did not have a dysfunctional family and she did well in school. A month after Aisha disappeared, the family went on the Montel Williams show to call attention to the case. America's Most Wanted and the Oprah Winfrey show also devoted segments to it. Despite all the efforts, no one had any idea what happened to Aisha. Equilla got really frustrated. She said it publicly that people aren't doing enough and she believes it is because Aisha is black and not white. About a year and a half on August 3rd, 2001, Aisha's book bag and other items were discovered during a construction project of Highway 18 in Burke County near Morkenton. It was found 26 miles or 42 kilometers from Shelby, where the family lived. All of their things were wrapped in a plastic bag. The FBI took it in for more forensic analysis. 
the results from this test still haven't been made public. Asia's family still tries to keep the case in the media. In 2008, they established a scholarship in her name for a deserving local student. They also host an annual walk to raise awareness and money to fund their search. There's also pictures of what she looked like back then and what she possibly could look like now. In May 2016, the FBI announced that they have a possible new lead. They said that Asia may have been seen getting into dark green early 1970s Lincoln Continental. The lead seemed promising but hasn't led anywhere just yet. The family still believes that one day Asia would walk through the door and they would be reunited. Very little is known about this next case. Also, since it happened 65 years ago, the odds of it ever getting solved is very low. Nevertheless, I decided to cover it. Walton Keyes was born in 1914. He was an American poet, painter, novelist, short story writer and filmmaker, among many other things. Keyes is considered an important mid-20th century poet. His work is still being studied in schools today. His work has been immensely influential on subsequent generations of poets writing in English. Keyes was very frustrated that his work could not do as well as he hoped it would. He admitted to his friends that sometimes he felt like disappearing. On July 19, 1955, his car was found deserted on a Marin County side of the Golden Gate Bridge. It is unclear if he decided to run away to start a new life or if he decided to end his life abruptly. Shonda Renee Stansbury was 24 years old when she disappeared in Weldon, North Carolina. Stansbury was last seen at about 6 a.m. on December 9, 2006 at her sister's workplace, the Waffle House. She had a lot of bruises on her face and legs and a bump on her temple. One of the customers at the Waffle House gave her a ride to the West Side Trailer Court in Roanoke Rapids. Stansbury had been staying with friends at a trailer court prior to her disappearance, but on the day she was last seen, they asked her to leave. She has never been heard from again. Police initially believed Stansbury left willingly. At 11.30 am on December 14, however, a woman in Walden County, South Carolina called 911 and said she had seen a woman whom she believed was Stansbury running into the woods behind the information grocery store of Highway 158 in Halifax, North Carolina. The woman hung up without identifying herself and investigators were unable to trace the call. But a few days later, the police tracked her down and spoke to the witness. She told them two black males chased the woman who was naked, bleeding from her face and screaming for help into the woods. The witness knew Stansbury and recognized her. She said that she didn't try to help because she was afraid for her life. The witness described one of the men chasing Stansbury as between 28 and 32 years old, 5 feet 8 inches tall with a dark complexion, big arms and a stocky build. He was wearing jeans, a white t-shirt and a baseball cap and may have been bald. The other man was 5 foot 6 with a medium build, light skin and dreadlocked hair. He may have been wearing Timberland boots, jeans with patches on them an oversized button-down shirt, which is possibly brown or light brown. Stansbury's case was reclassified as an endangered missing person as a result of the witness's statements. In January of 2008, over a year after her disappearance, several more people came forward and reported that they saw Shonda in Wilson County, approximately 60 miles away from Roanoke Rapids. Detectives were sent to search for Shonda in Wilson County but again failed to locate any trace of her. Stansbury has three children. Her mother believes she may have sustained a head injury that caused amnesia and she may be unable to recall her identity. Her case remains unsolved.